Hello, this is Scott from Astro North Wet up here in the uh, Great Northwest, uh, Washington, in the United States. And uh, today, something interesting came in the mail. This is my uh, brand new Altair Astro 269C Pro Tech. Here it is. Um, I'm not doing an official unboxing because I think those are kind of weird and boring, but, um, <laughs> this is, you know, something I've, I've kind of decided I wanted, uh, here's my old, I shouldn't say too old, it's only less than a year old, but my uh, QHY, um, what is this? This is QHY. 163 color camera and um, I'm getting I'm getting another one because I want a little bit uh, more uh, that's a 16 megapixel and this is 21 and um, I wanted to get something that performed a little better and I think this is going to do it. It gets no amp, really no amp glow, uh, sensor glow or whatever and uh, I've just, I, you know, read all the reviews on it and I really like it. It fits well with my Rasa and it will fit well with my FLT132 uh, William Optics refractor and uh, the only downside to that is I'm going to have to get a new um, focal reducer for that in order to get this thing under or over 1.0 on the that camera to uh, whatever focal length to um, pixel size ratio. This is a 3.3. Um, that one was a 3.9. So that one worked uh, pretty well with my um, uh, Rasa and also not too bad with the FLT, but um, I did not have my focal reducer on the FLT and I I think my stars were a little on the puffy side, so that's why I need to get it up over one, the ratio up over one. Um, <clears throat> and this makes that situation worse. So while, while that camera would work with my 0.8 focal reducer, I'm going to have to get the 7.2 focal reducer for this guy. Um, you know, and these are not cheap. They're like $700 items. So, um, but that's the price you got to pay, I guess, to, to have the versatility of using different cameras. But this will work great with my... Um, with my Rasa at f2 and um, 400 millimeters so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this on there at first and then and you know until I get that other focal reducer I'll use this other one exclusively on my FLT 132 with the uh, the 0.8 focal reducer on on there so anyway, um, I did all, all the math on this thing and I found out that with my Rasa at 25 uh, millimeters of back focus, um, what I need on the, in addition to this, and minus the 17.5 uh, back, or sensor depth inside here, which is, you know, somewhere in the middle of that black area is where the sensor is. And it's 17.5, so I got this little guy here, which was a 7, and I added this little spacer in here, which is, I I guess it's a 0 0.5, because uh, when I measured it, it comes out to 7.5. So, that goes on here. This is my adapter to the um, Rasa plate and then 
I once I get this thing screwed on. Um, oh, you know what? That's got to come off. I think. Yeah. So with these adapters that I bought, there's like a little bit of a. Um, A shoulder or something on there that uh, the when you screw it on there it goes past the threads um, which is kind of weird I don't know whose fault that is it's either so I guess it's uh, Celestron's fault see that the, the, um, the threads have a a little bit of a shoulder underneath and so when, when you screw this on it doesn't have enough threads to stay on there so that is kind of weird um, so I will come over here and get my uh, my little ring set here and um, I'm gonna just pause this for a second while I no I guess I can't if I pause it I'll lose it so um, basically what I have to do is uh, get some rings out of here or get a ring out of here that I can put on there that will make a uh, enough of a spacer to keep that thing from bottoming out I don't want to make it too big or it will probably mess up my focal length, uh, my back focal length. Let's see, here's a, this is a, a kit that I got from um, Bader. And uh, so it's got something as thick as like, I don't know what that is, two or three millimeters probably. Um, this is probably a millimeter or half a millimeter it's kind of about what I have on there I don't think that'll quite do it based on what I'm seeing so yeah, it's a little thicker that looks to be about a millimeter so I'm gonna try and get that on here with my one hand <laughs> wasn't quite counting on this for my video you can see all my chicken scratches from trying to keep track of my uh, my sh my shots from a previous uh, astronomy session a couple weeks ago and back in July So, okay, let me see if I can just screw this on and mash that thing down. Okay, let's just set this guy right on here for now. And I'll see if I can get this thing on here. I did it okay so now I can screw this guy on here I'll just set it right under the camera I have a, a little tripod and adapter I can use for this purpose but did I bring it to this no <laughs> okay let's see if that stops that from happening Okay, it's good. It goes on tight. Now, I will put my ring on and pick up my camera. I've got to pop this cover off, which is just a rubber, kind of a rubber plug. There's my sensor. 
I'm going to take a real quick look at it and see if I see any dust. I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it on here. Okay, there it is. Um, that should be ready to go on the Rasa, which is right over here. <clears throat> A new member to the family. Uh, the last thing I bought was this little um, ASI. 290 which is my new guide camera my other guide camera which is was this uh, I was using this uh, QHY mono or uh, color camera I would not recommend trying to use this for a guide camera because um, it's a QHY 53290 makes a great planetary camera and all that but Unfortunately, it doesn't, it's not compatible with um, PHD2 very well. It crashes the software. So anyway, uh, I would not recommend that for a guide camera unless you're going to use something else. Okay, so... Sorry about the crazy video here. I'm going to just do a quick blow off of my filter up here on the Here we go. Okay, now this will go right on there. Let me get it started. Okay. I always worry about touching this corrector plate. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just turn this thing straight up like this, and that'll get the... Um, That'll get the um, sensor where the broad direction is kind of parallel to my my zero position on my mount. So at least I'll kind of know when I'm looking at my when I'm looking at this, I'll know that that's the broad direction of the mount. And then if I need to turn it, I can always turn it. And then, let's see, um, I've got this thing here to plug in, which is USB 3, okay, and this is for my other camera, so I'm going to have to take that off, and uh, I'm not sure how to power this yet, I have to go in and start reading the instructions on uh, exactly what I need to hook up that 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 may need another uh, USB cable from my power supply uh, in order to get power to the camera I'm not sure if this provides power or not I guess I should go read the instructions oh no yeah well here's this is the power for the there we go that's the power for the uh, cooling so yeah, that should be enough. I, I think this is just for if I want to plug a guide camera in, but I don't I don't do that. I use my um I plug my guide camera into uh PhD separately. So um I should be good. That'll work. Now I've just gotta load everything uh the software into my little this little 
mount camera or a mount computer that I have that is Wi-Fi that uh, I communicate with it through this computer here using remote desktop and that's about all I got um, so that's you know I, I don't know if I'm gonna use my uh, it's still kind of warm out. I don't know if I'm going to use my my uh, dew shield, which is sitting over there. If I do, I'll have to uh, just take the wires off and pop it on there. Uh, the only thing I don't like about it is it has uh, the tendency to collect heat inside of it when I'm trying to do dark frames. Um, so... The one good thing about this camera is I can do dark frames indoors because it has a really good cooler on it. It'll, it'll go down to minus 45 centigrade or whatever. Uh, and so in, you know, in that case I can just do them indoors. You know, I can just bring the whole thing inside and then not have to worry about it. I can just take it off of there and just put the plug in and do it on the bench you know on my do it on my desk over here and um, and I don't have to worry about that so that's another another good benefit for this camera um, okay I'm done <laughs> wish me luck I've got to go do download my software and stuff for it now it's uh, and of course the next three nights are gonna be cloudy because and I apologize to all my Northwest astronomy friends that uh, you know have been having good weather I had to go and buy this camera and mess that up so uh, but it will be I think we're gonna have some good weather Sunday night or possibly Monday and this is Wednesday right now so it'll be a few days but you know I'll have time to mess with it and um, maybe <coughs> I'll have some at least be able to take some uh, test shots of stars <coughs> Excuse me and get the um, Get the focus and everything kind of dialed in on it and then when I have a good night I'll just be able to roll it out there and do my thing Okay, that is really it. I'll talk to you later. And if you like the video uh, Give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye